I'll just do it, even though I don't think the hotkeys work anymore. There, it should be recording. Let me double check. And yeah, okay, cool. We're ready to go. All right, so we're gonna fly through. We're gonna look at everyone's stuff, sort of go through it, and then we can talk a little bit. Um, I know some of you had some questions at the end of last class, um, and I just uh, I I just needed to go to. I hate to be sure like that. It takes me. Our videos sometimes in this class are really long, and it takes a while for me to. I try to get them up that night, so I have to take the video. What happens when I sign off? Zoom doesn't render the video until I sign off completely. After I sign off, Zoom then renders the video, which takes anywhere from about, if we do a full class from 6.30 to let's say 9.30, that's three hours. That's easily an hour and 20 minutes of rendering. And I have a very fast computer at a minimum. And then I have to take it, upload it to YouTube, which is another hour plus, And then I have to link it for you guys. So I try to do all that that night um, so I can have them up there on Canvas so you guys can watch them the next day or later that night if you're staying up late. So anyway, um, let's just take a look here. I'm going to work with uh, Photoshop this evening, and hopefully we don't have any problems. OK. So uh, I noticed you did put some reference up here, Robert, that looks really cool. It's great. Yeah. Some really fun ideas. I like this one on the left here with the ceiling emitting light through it. Uh, that's a very clever yeah. idea. I mean, that right there solves all your sort of your lighting um, problems, and it gives you some options. I also like that piece you put up here from Spooner, because I think that's quite yeah. wonderful. Um, that's um, that's part of this assignment, sort of came from that background of looking at uh, looking and knowing Spooner and seeing that he had to do a throne room like that for Disney TV. Okay, um, these are also really good. So you have some really good uh, good stuff in there. Okay, that makes it work. Okay, so good job on there. And then looking at your thumbnails, um, hold on a minute. Let's see if I can get back to your thumbnail. There they are. Um, okay, so these all look really cool. Um, I like I like that angle on number one. It's looking quite nice. Um, two is good, but we're a little close on it. I, I like number four, too. And then number nine also is okay. looking very fun, and six, too. So, okay. Yeah, I mean, yeah, you have a couple of really good shots. That's a good shot where we can see quite a bit of the room. On number nine, you could probably get away with pulling out a little bit more. So we can see a little okay. bit more of from the mid-ground and the foreground in there. Uh, number five is also a really great shot, too. That sort of dedicated one point that ties in there really nicely. So, I mean, you have, you have quite a few different options here. Um, number four is also looking really good. So we have one, four, five, nine. You could easily pick one of those, develop it further, or uh, do a, do some more passes on these two if you like. Okay. Okay. Yeah, they look good. Nice. All right. Done. Thank All right. you. All right. Good work. Thank you. And um, let's dive in here. Let's take a look at Zhang. Um, Zhang, did you have any thumbnails up or no? I mean, reference. Um, I I didn't put any up. Oh, that's okay. I was just double checking. Make sure Photoshop didn't uh, unorganize it out of order. Okay. okay. Um, all right. This is where I like to get your guys' feedback. Let's label these as one, two, and three, and four. Oh, sure. I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> oh, don't worry about it. I can label them sometimes real quick. It's no big okay. deal. Hey, if you guys, if you do work like this and you do amazing thumbnails, don't even worry about it. I'll label it. Okay. All right. I'm reading what's in the in the chat room there. Like, okay, waiting to see a little comments too. So people are liking. I think two is quite dynamic. That was my choice as well, and I think yeah, that's my favorite. Everyone's sort of going with two, and the reason why it's so nice, it still has that one point feel, but it has that light tilt on it, and that light tilt just does a lot to make something sort of pop and give it uh, some visual appeal and interest to it. The other thing that you did really good in, in Zhang, you always do this Why you, you got you and um, Selena and a couple of you guys are just such good students. You really pay attention when I do a demo. You did everything I talked about in the demo. You have foreground in there, you have elevation. Uh, you can see you have the stairs going up. You can really see 
how things work. One of the things I did want to do tonight when we finish all this is I wanted to go over stairs real quick to remind some of you how stairs work and how to draw stairs because I did get that question. So I thought I could add, do a little demo in perspective talking about and explaining that. So that way, when you guys get into stairs, you'll have it drawn all correctly. Um, I think that's quite wonderful, Zeng. I think you did a good job with it. Thanks, Bill. Okay. Um, they all look very nice. Um, but I think if I had to pick two, that would be my favorite. Um, I also like the angle sort of on, I like number one, but it's a little busy with some things in there. So I sort of like the number four would be my second choice, you know? Got I it. like that high chair. <laughs> yeah, cool. that, that might've been a little push too hard. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, but that's okay. Uh, go go with number two. I think it's a, a really nice piece. Got it. Okay, cool. Okay, thanks. All right, thank you, sir. All right, next over here, we have, and uh, Lynette, Lynette, can you remind Hi. me? Did you upload more images than the one? No, I was gonna say, I didn't, <laughs> I wasn't able to do much. I was doing, okay. I was doing the layouts first and I was wow. having such a hard time, like, I don't know, getting anything that I liked. So I was like, okay, let's go back and let's just do props for now. Now I was only able to do like a couple of statues, but I think this is really helpful to figure out like how I want to set up my room. What you did here is absolutely wonderful. These are great. I mean, you figured out what the statues look like. That's very hard to sort of do. So I'm not going to say that you didn't do much at all. I think you did a lot. Um, you've looked at reference. You figured that out. You problem solved it. That's a, a, a in one day. That's a great accomplishment. Okay. So um, I think what you did is absolutely fantastic. Um, because these statues positioned in the room right will be super awesome. You know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I think I kind of know what I want to do. It's more, I know I want to have like a, maybe it's like in a cave, like underwater. And I was thinking like Greek, maybe Roman. Yeah. And, uh, I'm debating whether these should be like, cause I know sometimes the pillars, they'll make them like they'll sculpt people into them or if they should mm -hmm. be like, um, uh, what do you call it? Like I know it's a- uh, Like a statue. free standing statue. Is that what you yeah. mean too? Yeah. yeah, or that, and then like people could put that's where I could put the treasures or like people give offerings there. And I think what, be... in, how how I imagine these when I look at them is mm -hmm. I imagine seeing like a, a a set of walkway and stairs that are going up like this. Mm -hmm. And then there's like this large uh, squared off platform sort of like this. And then one of the statues is sitting up here on top of it like that. And then uh -huh. the same thing here. On this side, you would have this squared off edge. And then maybe what happens when that stair drops, it goes straight for a little bit, and then it drops mm -hmm. again. And then right here, you would have another statue on that side. So like yeah. they're these really like gold, solid gold statues or something. And then the stair is still leading you up to, to the chair itself. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, that would, that would totally work, absolutely. Okay. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, they're really cool. And you. Um, and you could easily do another one and have like four, or what you could do too, see if I can draw this small enough. You could have- I was having actually a lot of fun making these statues. I kind of just wanted to do a whole bunch. <laughs> no, if you want to do more, because what you could do is if it elevates up, and let's say you have the throne here, you could have a set of statues here and here on the stairs. And then uh -huh. you could come down here and there could be, like right about here, there could be another set of statues there and there, and they would mm -hmm. overlap really cool. And then you could have like your little smoking butt pots right in there, yeah. you know? And yeah. that would really look pretty awesome. That's one idea. Another idea that I was thinking of is this could just all come down here like this. And then you could have this part be open on the side. And then there could be a little segment like this with a statue on the side like that. Mm -hmm. And then this could be Actually, it'd be sort of cool if that was like gold. This could literally drop off and be like a like a miniature cliff in there, like that, you know? Yeah. Like there's no way to get to that. And then there's these other sets of statues. I forget what movie it was that had like what was it? I think it was one of the last Hercules movies or whatever. There was a part in it where there was like a, a historic room and they had all these like statues of different gods in there and stuff. So. Um, yeah, these are, and these look like you actually went to like a figure drawing class 
<laughs> you know, and I mean, they look really nice. So uh, they're, they're very, very wonderful. I think that's going to add to the design. Um, and I think it looks great. So I was only asking if we had multiple images because when I drag all the images in Photoshop, if if uh, they're not labeled in like K1, K2, K3, that'll shuffle them in different orders. And then I didn't want to miss your reference if you had it. No, so, I, my references should be in there. I, they should yeah. or shouldn't? Yeah, they, I think it's, it's a reference uh, right there. I don't know. Tell you what, let me do it this way. I'm just, it's easier for me to, actually, it's probably all mixed up. You see what I have to do, this is how oh. complicated it is. If there I, it is. You guys upload the folders, but the problem is, is I have to take the work out of the folder and then dump it into another folder so I can grab them all and drop them into Photoshop at one time. I That's, think it was the one you had like right next to, uh, I need to see the, the Photoshop thing. <laughs> It's, it's just top references and then zero, like uh, underscore zero one. I think it was like right next to someone else's work. So it's not that one. Yeah, it's the next one. Click the next one. Yeah, there we go. So is this it? Yeah. Yeah, that one and then the other one. Okay, this one. That's cool. So I was looking yeah. at everybody like uh, these statues. Yeah, that, those are great. These are really nice references. Yeah, another cool statue you could do is uh, the, the Nike of Samothrace. Have you heard of that one? Uh, no, I haven't. So let me it's look that up. It's a famous Greek sculpture with this. Um, it, it's like a, it looks like an angel, but the head's missing. Oh, that one. Yes. Yep. yes. Yeah, that would be another cool statue. It has the big wings on it. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, they, they have that. They have the head of it, but... The head is in an English museum because somebody back in the 18 or 1700s stole it and took it to England and put it in a museum. And then the Greeks have been asking for it back and they never gave it back. So, um, yeah. <laughs> anyway, yeah, it's great reference. Really nicely done. It's really good stuff there. So I'm not worried about you. Everything you're doing looks great. Uh, uh, keep plugging you. away. Um, so part of your homework I want you guys to do would be to start refining the room and get it locked in. And, you know, and then I'll go over some, you'll be doing like thumbnails into like mini roughs, I guess. That way um, I can make sure there's no, no problems uh, and we could address any perspective issues, okay? Yep. All right, cool. All right, Selena, thank you, Lynette, good work. Thank you. Uh, well, I couldn't do as many as I wanted to because I was really struggling on it. Okay. If you're struggling, I want you to simplify it and not go too complicated. Okay. This is one of those things that um, students can comp, comp, I can't talk. They can complicate the heck out of when you don't have to. You can just keep it simple. Remember the demo that I just did, right? It's built it up with just like squares yeah. and it doesn't have to be, you know, you, you don't have to get these curved rooms and weird looking windows and all that stuff just just you can keep yeah, it very I, easy I, I was like I, I just wanted like a cool design so i was trying to oh, i know i get it nothing wrong with that um you can keep going i mean you you have stuff in here that's working that's quite nice it's very fun um and then you you know but you know watch these round curved rooms you know and and if you get too much of, you know, just, I don't know, simplify it, fill it up, sketch, have fun, don't overthink it, okay? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I mean, that's what I like to do. I just sit and sketch and I'm not always worried about having a 100% outcome. I know the outcome will arrive once I've sketched and looked at my reference and got my brain wrapped around the subject matter. It's what happens all the time, okay? So, so Phil, uh, yeah. just a question, so if you, the problem like I was running into was um, I wanted to do the just sketching part and discover stuff, but I couldn't decide on what kind of room layout I wanted. And like the method you showed us last time about building the room first and then putting stuff in it. I feel like don't you kind of have to like already know what you want your end result to be in order to know how to make a room around that, right? 
Yeah, I mean, there, there's a couple different options that I'm trying to show you on each assignment. Like the last assignment, we did some of the props first and we were a little bit yeah. more familiar with those and then we built the room around it. On this one, I was to me, this is a little bit more complex of a room. So I wanted to take the approach of showing you the room first. So, you know, whenever I, I have an assignment, what I try to do is make a, a plan of attack. Uh, and what I mean by assignment, like doing industry work, if I'm doing a project, I try to attack it and think of ideas for that. And then if I get locked up on it, you know, sometimes I do the props first, sometimes I do the room, sometimes I do this super rough sketch where the perspective is way off and then I go back into it later and fix the perspective. So it, it, it just yeah. depends, I, you know, it, some of it's searching, some of it's sometimes, you know, I'll sketch something and I'll have an idea that was different than what I initially done, you know, that I initially did the first time. You know, um, another thing that happens to me is I'll be putting ideas out. I walk away and then it'll be like 12 at night or one in the morning and boom, I have an idea that pops in my head. It's really cool. So sometimes I'll keep a little stack of post-its next to the bed and I'll plot a little ballpoint pen. I'll sketch out my idea real quick so I can revisit it in the morning. You know, so I think all of those, I don't think there's any wrong way or right way, Robert. I think it's all part of a process of sort of exploring and trying to find the best solution possible, you know? So you could see like, yeah. I'm, I, a good example would be, look at the throne room that Michael did. He didn't have a chair, he didn't have it elevated. He had a different approach. He just took a wide open room, had tarps and a bunch of props around it. And that's it, he sort of simplified yeah. it. So that could be a different approach. The way I drew it with the symmetry and the elevation, that's just an idea that I had that I think would allow some of you to have a, a, a better or a higher achievable outcome. So that might not be the best idea. Maybe I need to go in, just draw a sketch around a room or a square room and have something in the middle and not in the back of the room, you know? And then what if I had just talking about this, you know? Um, what if I had something like this? What if I have a room that goes back here like so? And then it keeps going. And then I end up having maybe something around here that's elevated. And then all back in here is, is props and gold all around there. You know what I mean? That could yeah. work too. I could have all those props around and then I could just have a small set of stairs. And I could just have a really simplified chair that's not overdone for a throne, you know? And then um, all this could be big giant piles of gold and treasure surrounding it and then I could work in the architecture so I think there's always different solutions um, what I like to do it and I try to do the same thing even when I'm drawing characters is I just try to take take different approaches to see what leads me to a different outcome you know yeah you know um, and I, I think too I know for me I'm I don't always hit a home run so the more thumbnails that I do, the better off I end up being later in the project. So yeah. I, I'm sort of a thumbnail geek because of that. I really like doing thumbnails. And um, I find when I work with clients, the more thumbnails I provide them, usually the happier they are in the beginning because I explore ideas. And I like one of the big things I always like doing when I do freelance or work for someone is I like giving my client options. I think options are key, you know? So, and, and another thing too, yeah. there's some, sometimes I didn't do that, but there's some times where I just start like this. I start from a top view and I start thinking about what if I'm looking, you know, and, and I have something here and then maybe there's something that goes like this, this way, maybe the room angles a little bit here. And then maybe the walls come out that way and then arch back in here. So I, sometimes I start with the top view and try to get these interesting angles and lines in there. And then I'll try to transfer that into the perspective view and see what I come so, up with. So, so for the thumbnails, I don't really have to follow perspective. Like I don't have to like be super uptight about perspective, right? Cause that's, that's what I was no. struggling with. Cause I'm like, oh, no, you can, I, I, I just showed you a way to construct it, to be tied on the perspective in case you're struggling with that or you want to know how to build it. Um, like I was just saying, a lot of times I just sit and I rough. And for me, 
the way that I work, one of the golden secrets is listening to music. So, you know, I'll put on like Pandora or I'll go listen to uh, on YouTube. They have like, you know, the, the drawing chill mix or something like that. I'll put my headphones on and I just sit there and I get in what I call the drawing mood. I have no distractions around me. I just crank. I lose track of time. Next thing I know, I have two pages later and I go back and revisit them and pick the drawings that I like and then maybe take a break and do another pass at those. You know, the, everyone's going to have a different process because we're all going to think about information differently. In fact, I'm going to show you someone's thumbnails tonight. Somebody did the thumbnails and they did them in in uh, grouping of, of shape with no line. There's nothing wrong with that. If that's how you think and how you organize it, go for it. If it, if it makes sense for you to do that, you know, OK. I know sometimes. I think as artists, we want there to be an immediate answer in a way. And sometimes, I don't know if there is, sometimes it's, it's just an issue of practice and sketching and drawing and getting involved with it. And um, for me, it's a it's a, a slow buildup where I need to look at the props, the reference, I need to think about the drawing, and then I need to, you know, like that reference you had earlier that had the light coming down. That was a great idea. I never thought of that idea. I thought of light coming from underneath, like Frankenstein lighting. So you know, that's another idea I can incorporate into something, you know, and you just, you know, you just keep building, building it up and see what you come up with. You know, I mean, if you guys, I don't want to feel like I'm rushing anybody. It was only a day between if you need, you know, let's, let's just focus on doing more thumbnails for next class, you know? Um, yeah, that's how I, I felt like I was kind of rushing, but also the thing that, um, like when I was looking at all my reference, I had a lot of like the reference has a lot of cool ideas and i see a lot of things in each one that i think are awesome and it's so i'm trying to think of like how to incorporate everything i think is awesome from all these different ones sometimes they don't all work together that's right um and so there's that obstacle but then there's also like well, what props am I going to put in here? Because this one's got piles of gold. This one's got treasure chests. And this one has statues. This one's got, you know, sometimes yeah. those don't all fit together. So that's right. That's where I, there's, that's where I kind of get stuck. And that's one of the hard things about being a designer is designing and thinking up. That's what separates out people that no perspective that might be able to draw. Um, I, I met a guy once who wanted to teach with us. He sent me his portfolio and, and he, he told me he was really good with perspective and he knew it very well. And I opened it and he was right. He, he knows it like an architect, like an architect, but all his drawings were stiff. They had no feel like Armand Serrano or Michael Spooner. There was nothing in it that felt exciting or new or different. You know what I mean? So yeah. that's that part of that design. So you know, like, like I was saying before, you know, these things, they take time, they develop over time. You hopefully you learn a little bit here, a little bit there, and you get better and better. You know, I mean, I'll take, um, I'll just mention this because I'll take Zhang as an example, where um, Zhang and Selena, they jumped into a class once, a narrative class, and they'd never drawn environments. And they were like drowning in the class. They were like, oh my God, how do I do this? What do I do? I, I don't know. And now here we are like a year later and they're doing really beautiful environments. They're doing amazing characters. They're just killing it, you know? So uh, it takes time sometimes. Yeah, you're going to get thrown in the deep end. Yeah, you're going to feel like you're drowning a little bit, but usually that's a good thing because then that's going to make, when artists are frustrated, it means you don't have an answer and you're trying to find the answer. It's the same thing with learning a foreign language. There's a part in that language where you get really frustrated and, and then you're like, oh, I don't get this. Well, that frustration usually means you're learning something new and your brain needs time to process that information. You'll get there. So you just, the, the one thing you got to do is stay positive and keep drawing. The one thing you don't do is just be like, man, this sucks and, and I'm stuck and, and I don't like this. And then you develop this whole negative belief system. No, we do that as artists. We put that belief system around ourselves, and we create reasons why we can't succeed you know i see it yeah. all the time with students i'll talk to students and they'll be like yeah you know this just isn't really working for me so i think i'm just going to go uh 
I just talked to a student about this the other day. I'm just going to go to China and study art. And I'm like, why would you go to China? And so, because they're more serious about it there than the Americans are here. And I'm like, yeah, but you have all these designers and classes and schools out here in LA and Burbank and everywhere. And, and I'm like, no, I said, this isn't about the art. You want to get out of your circumstances for whatever reason and have a reason and you're using China as that reason. It has nothing to do with art, drawing, and design. Because if you want to learn about art, drawing, and design, you don't have to move to China to do that. Or else everybody would be freaking going to China, right? No, you don't have to do that. And I actually just had this conversation with a student the other day about this whole topic. And I'm like, uh-uh. I'm like, I'm sorry. I'm not going to listen to that. I'm not going to agree with that because that doesn't make any sense to me. So, you know, your, your belief system that you create around your work and how you inspire yourself. I mean, how, how many of you in this class could raise your hand if I said you could put more time on the last project? How many of you could raise your hand? How many of you could say, you know, I, maybe I could have put a little, maybe I could have done one more page of thumbnails. You could raise your hand, you know, or you might say, you know, what if I spend a little bit more time on my rendering on my light study? I might have had a little bit better results. You can raise your hand. So I look at that and go, part of that is back to that equation of how we work as artists. It's about time management. It's about organizing your, your, your what you're going to do during the day, combined with time management, combined with a good belief system, combined with all those things, you know? Um, and you throw one little wrench in those creative gears that, that causes a problem. Like one of my students in my other class told me that his dad is sick. Is, I'm not kidding you. It's like his dad's sick. His uncle has throat cancer. And um, his one of his buddies he grew up with um, just got diagnosed with some type of weird marrow disease in his bones or something. Like three major things happened to him with three people that he loves within a week's worth of time. And I'm like, dude, that's horrible. I'm like, you can't draw and create when you get affected by stuff like that. So, I mean, we're all susceptible to all these things. And, and it's just a balance of life to figure out how to get them all to work. You know, I think that the, the people, when I look around at people that are very successful, and when I talk to people, and meet them like other artists, like being around Steven Silver and Simon Rogers, Michael Spooner, Armand Serrano. The one thing I noticed with all these people is they have a really strong belief system in themselves and they don't let things get them down. They find a way to get over the obstacle. They're always smiling, they're always happy. And there's different ways you can do that. You can do that from a religious point of view. You know, some people have very strong religious beliefs and they need to follow on that path to keep them held down. Some people, uh, need to lock themselves in a room and be away from other, other distractions because they have ADHD and they need to stay focused. Um, there, there, there's a different reason for everybody. Not everyone's the same. So part of the secret in your success is finding out what you need to do to fix yourself and keep yourself going the straight path forward. So I hope that all makes sense. You know, what's funny, you guys don't realize I talk to a lot of you in meetings and other stuff. And I see a lot of the obstacles you have. You know, I, family is a huge obstacle for a lot of you in different areas. Sometimes your parents don't get it. People don't get it. You want to be an artist. I mean, it, so you, you got to weed out the things you want to do and then figure out how do you make it work? You know, I mean, if you, if you wanted to be, if you set a goal for yourself and said, hey, in three years, I want to be one of the top children's book illustrators. How would you complete that goal? Uh, you better start by gathering reference and looking at who the top are, looking at the styles. You better find some of the biggest publishers that are producing these books and try to get your work to them, and build a portfolio around that. And if you were to stay diligent to that course, you'd probably be able to figure that out in three years and get it done, you know? And there's something to say about that, you know? So um, I, I believe that the human brain and the mind, when equipped properly, channeled down the right path um, can really produce some amazing things. You just, um, and I always say this statement, artists tend to be our own worst enemies, right? Wouldn't you guys all agree to that? You know, so everyone's nodding their head right now like that. And it's true. So you have to figure out a way to fix those things. You have to figure out a way to overcome some of these obstacles. You know, I remember I was in graduate school teaching at Fullerton College, teaching online at CGMA, 
my dad was sick in the hospital and my mom was in the intensive care. I had all that going on at one time and I'm married. I got two kids to take care of. And I'm like, dude, my head was going to explode. I literally like dropped off the cliff for a little bit and had to regroup and build myself back up. So, I mean, things happen in life sometimes that we can't control. And all you have to do is figure out the best way to overcome these obstacles and do what you can do, you know? So, um, I don't know. That's my little pep speech. Uh, maybe we should watch a motivation video tonight at the end to put the icing on the cake. Because for me, that's something that's really important. That's really huge. And, um, you know, um, everyone is trying to do all of this stuff at the same time. Then to top it off, we're in the middle of a global pandemic. We're all stuck at home, locked in rooms, and we're bored to tears. I mean, that's not fun either. You know, so you have all these things happening. I mean, come on, Robert, look at you. You got a freaking snowstorm out there. You can't even go to the grocery store. I mean, it's like. Well, and I have a, I have an eight month old waking me up all the time. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> I get that. it. I get it. I've been there. I remember, dude, when my kids were little, my wife is, hor is horrible at getting up in the middle of the night and going back to bed. It just ruins her whole sleep schedule. I'm not as bad. So when my kids were little, I used to get up with them and feed them all the time because then I could crash. And then I would be at work. Uh, part of the parking lot structure in Disney was underground. So every lunch, I take the elevator down. I go sleep in my car for an hour, you know, um, and I would do little things like that to sort of survive getting over raising my kids when they were younger. I mean, you do what you got to do to get by. But anyway, I, I hope that registers a little bit because you can't sit and draw and produce if you have this huge negative umbrella around you. You have to find a way to toss that umbrella. And sometimes that umbrella is caused by family issues. It's caused by friends. You know, um, you know, it, there's all these things. Sorry, there's something on my cam right there. I'm trying to get rid of. There's all these things that come back to affect everything. And they're it's weird, but I, I mentioned this sometimes about like people that have addiction problems or that have alcohol anonymous uh, meetings. One of the benefits of those, one of the things they teach the people is to realize there are things you can control and things you can't control. And that you have to, that is something really important for artists to realize. Like you, you, you know, if your friend dies in a car accident, that's something you can't control. Um, you have no, and you're going to have to deal with that. And, and if you and if you have a friend that catches COVID and passes, there's nothing you can do. That's not your fault either. So all you can do and be responsible for are the things that are in your life that that you know that you can change. So if I have you know a couple extra hours on the weekend and I can put that in the sketchbook, that's going to benefit me. Versus if I sit down and play you know PlayStation for another four hours, that's not going to benefit me. You know, but. You, you can't just sit and draw all day either. There's life has a system of balances in it too, you know? So anyway, I hope that all sort of makes sense. But uh, Selena, um, that was just a good conversation. I'm not trying to deviate from your work at all. Um, keep exploring, keep having fun. Just get in there and be rough. There's nothing wrong yeah. with being rough. Okay, and I, because I, 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 I wanted, the thing is I wanted to be rough with it. I wanted to like, just, 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 just yeah. let loose, right? Just but, dive in, have but, then I, but then I, I look at your demo, I'm like, oh my God, Phil is like following perspective and everything. That means I should follow the perspective. <laughs> okay, you don't, I'll tell you what, how about I do a rough drawing tonight when we finish the crit? Okay. I'll do like a super rough drawing. Just throw something on the paper, not caring about perspective. I'll give you another that's approach good. to it. The, well, the other thing. In my head, my head's just telling me, if you don't follow the perspective, Phil's going to call you on it. Like, Phil is going <laughs> to say something about the perspective issue. You have like, to I'm going to pull up outside your house with a bullhorn and just be like, so we need to talk, you know, couldn't follow perspective, you know. Yeah. So, okay, look, well, another thing I want to comment to you, Selena, is uh, stop doing this right here. Don't draw the square and feel like you have to compose in it. Okay? Okay. Because that limits you. You're like, oh, I got to be in there. I got to, no. Take a blank piece of paper and then start sketching, then frame it, and then move that to the side and then start another one. Give yourself the area to be loose and rough with it and develop whatever happens. Okay? Okay. All right, cool. Thanks, okay. Phil.
Oh, don't worry about it. Of course. I want you guys to all, you know, be good, talented artists and succeed and do well and be happy. And, you know, I, I just, you know, I've been meeting with a lot of students and this is like sort of crazy times right now. You know, you got, it's just hard. It's hard on everybody. You know, the economy, it's been hard. Student debt's hard. You know, people, COVID, this, that, being locked inside. It's a difficult time for everybody, you know. Um, I'll leave that one there. All right, Mike. Yeah, so I did exactly what Selena was afraid of, and I had the same fears. I was like, oh, no, I'm just going to go out this wild and not worry about perspective as much. And then so it's encouraging to hear that that's OK and that's a good direction to go. Yeah, yeah I wanted to really try to just fly at it and just kind of get what was in my head out. <laughs> Selena's all, I'm scared of Phil's ruler, you know? Yeah. <laughs> Just dive in, crank on it. As long as you guys crank and throw it together, then eventually you got to pull out the ruler and make sure it's working. Because if you don't do that, someone will, you can't put it in your portfolio. Someone will see it and they'll call you out on it. They'll be like, hey, that's off or it looks bad. Or we want to hire somebody that draws incorrectly. So um, yeah, I think these are cool, Mike. Um, just go back, have fun. Maybe that's today's lesson. Maybe I shouldn't have done. I thought what I was doing would be a good demo to show you how to build the room. Because every time I teach a class, I try to think of what's a way that I could show students something to do that'll make it easier for them to learn it. And then sometimes I can overcomplicate that too. So it's all right. Yeah. <laughs> Kayla, <laughs> you know, right? Fear the ruler, right? That'd be a good oh, yeah. slide. I got to get that on the shirt. Fear the ruler. Fullerton College, you know, entertainment arts program, right? You know, so yeah. Keep my part of my goal was to see what you guys could do today, and then just let you go have fun over the weekend and keep exploring. You know, just keep drawing. There's not always a wrong answer. It'll be fun tonight. I'll draw and I'm gonna ditch the ruler. I won't use so, it. I'll just ditch it and I'll just whatever comes down comes down. Okay. So I have a couple questions before you X mine out. Um, yeah. Um, on the, if you go back to the thumbs. Sorry, I was looking at your reference. Oh yeah, yeah, we can we can look at that first if you want. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I I kind of had this crazy idea where I would have, um, kind of a very round room, and then these like raised platforms that are like composed the throne room. Um, is there a need for like being able to see the ground, in this? Um, or can it really be as long as it's elevated enough? What are your thoughts on that? Is that banjo music in the background? Oh, sorry. My daughter has a violin class. Oh, doing right I, thought now. You're, I thought you were like on a Western on a farm or something. Like that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. I'm like, is he watching a Western at the same time? You know, no. Okay. Um, yeah, I thought it was a harmonic at first, and then I thought it was like, a, anyway. Um, so to answer that question, Mike, I, I prefer eventually that there is something on the ground and you build up from it because it anchors the drawing down. Okay. Because uh, sometimes if things aren't anchored down, then they can feel like they're floating in the room. Right. Uh, another thing that I'm going to comment to you on is you're doing some pretty intense designs here with tons of ellipses in there. And I'm, I always do this thing to you where I put you on the fishing reel and I pull you back a little bit, you know? I really but, want to try it this time, Phil. <laughs> I know you want to try it, but um, I would do it within reason to where it was not so complicated that the drawing's not going to succeed. Okay. You know? So, because um, like, I mean, they're good thumbnails, but I look at this and I start to see like, hey, if that's the middle, why does this feel like it's shifted a little bit on one side? You know what I mean? Yeah, um, I know. It's off center. Yeah, but that's okay, though. I mean, but then again, I feel like, okay, um, if you have a horizon line in here about there, so, oh, boy, why are we getting into these, like, large ellipse shapes and trying to nail those down? And and that's like, oh, you know. Yeah. I know. So, I, I'm always always come back to, you know what, Marshall taught me this. Marshall taught me, he's like, you know, 85% of all art students think that by complicating the drawing, it's going to be a better answer. 
And part of learning more about art over time is learning how when when to simplify something. So I like there's a lot of things in here that I like that are very cool that I think you can use. I love the idea of stairs that are going like this that are split. That you know, I mean that's complicated to draw. It's a you have a rotational elliptical staircase that's dropping based off of a center radius. And every time it drops, the stairs are having to angle to that radius, you know? Right. Every time it drops, it's dropping a notch like this mm -hmm. on that radius pole. Yeah, it's doable, but, you know, then again, if I had, if I opened up Maya, I could figure that out in Maya in, in two minutes, you know what I mean? Right. And have an answer. So if I was doing this for a project for a company, I would probably do a block on in Maya first. And then I would, take my block ins and I would send them to them with drawings, showing them my ideas. But that's another way that I like to work. It alleviates time. So um, don't be our new slogan. Don't be afraid of the ruler, right? Don't fear the ruler. So just yep. go into it, have fun and draw, okay? Um, and a couple other questions. Sure. So um, when you were talking about the floor grounding it, were you saying that I kind of need to have it built up from a ground plane to have it make sense? Um, were, were you implying that I would need to have um, that floor visible or at least that it should be constructed on a common plane? Um, so what could happen in some of these is, I like for example, I could look over here and I see this here and I see a room, but then I'm wondering, okay, if that's the back wall of the room, how do the stairs go down? So, or is this go down like it's a cliff? And it's it actually down. inside of one of those domed um, kind of like. So I, I guess what I'm saying is that you could draw all this stuff and put it together, mm -hmm. but the back of my mind, I always come back to, I've used this term before about, um, about the construction and the physics of how it works, right? So mm -hmm. I wanna know how does that platform sit in that room? How is it anchored to the ground? Does all this fit in a round room or not, you know? Got it, okay. Yeah, okay. As long as it makes sense in perspective, like that's the goal, right? Yeah, at the end of the day, of, yeah. The drawing okay. has to look right. Okay, cool. And then right. I also had trouble with like, do you feel like I have enough props in these designs? I, I was going for the more used throne room rather than the abandoned filled with piles of treasure throne room. Um, I could add more like decor and like maybe a couple statues. For this assignment, um, I wanted you to have a little bit more in terms of we mentioned the gold, the boxes, statues okay. or some other items to indicate. Some of these don't come off as some of them come off as a throne room. Some of them come off is um, of like this one here when I first saw it looked like a, a bathing area in a Roman suite. Because I saw the round water and the stairs. It looked like that's where someone would walk in and sit and bathe. It was in like the Roman. Oh, I see. Or something, you know. Yeah. Uh, this, I saw something. I saw the throne that looks like it was elevated there. But then I couldn't make out what's dipping in that hole and why it's there, you know? And then these stairs going around it, what was happening in this design is you have the distance from there to there is equal to the distance from there to there, which is equal to that, which is very similar to that. So you have a repetition of four different shape variants that okay. creates a little bit of an issue there. Yeah, um, no, that's good. You know, this one was looking really cool because it's sort of an offset angle like this. Mm -hmm. um, but then I did question, I'm wondering if these stairs look like they're coming straight, if this room was designed by somebody to be a symmetrical room, why would there be stairs coming right in the middle of it like that? You know what I mean? So I was wondering that about that, if the stairs felt right, you know? Yeah. On that piece. So, you know, but that's where I might erase the stairs and then go back, keep that and just keep drawing on it and see how you could add into it, you know? Maybe I'm having a harder time understanding that one. So you're saying that those stairs would be coming based off of where they're at proportionally, they'd be 
in the middle of the room? Um, well, if you, why would they cross and intersect the whole entire uh, symmetrical line for the composition, you know? Like you, you, you drew a room here that's symmetrical base. It has part of an ellipse, part of an oh, ellipse. I see. You have um, a, a giant pole there. You, I think you're intending to have this pole there too. And they, so it would be all equal match. So that's perfect symmetry, which is power, wealth, religion, and all that good stuff combined. So mm -hmm. um, then all of a sudden, the other thing too is the height. If somebody was about right there, somebody here, I don't know if the, that's the right height or too tall. I don't know. I'd have to figure that out. I just thought it's weird to have all the symmetry and then all of a sudden- I see what you're saying. There's a staircase cut, cutting through the middle of it. I know yeah. why you put the stairs in there. You put them in there as foreground elements to make mm -hmm. the drawing in interesting. However, though, part of the original design on the room is keeping it symmetrically based. So maybe a solution would be to put the chairs or the stairs on the other side. Yeah, um, exactly. Or okay. maybe you might see if you were to pull out from this, sometimes you have to pull out of this to see what's happening in the whole room. Maybe there's stairs up here that would come into here and then start going down like this. And then if you were oh, to draw yeah, that's cool. where that hits the ground, then oh, that's you'd great. Have to come up and then find the symmetry. Oops. You'd have to come up, find the symmetry, and then the angle of the stairs in there to get that matched out correctly. See that? Yeah, no, that's really cool. So if I if you did that, it would then match this overall line of symmetry in the room and it would make more sense to me. So, so for um if if we could look at like number three and four real quick, I did have a question about symmetry and and sort of that one point power perspective. Um yeah. I, like on number two, I put the plan in there to kind of add interest to it. Um and then, of course, number four uses the stair plant thing the way that number three does. Um, is that a good solution for that? Or do you have any other suggestions about sort of breaking up the symmetry but still maintaining that? Or, or should I not be as worried you, about symmetry? If you want to break the symmetry, you could break it. In fact, the painting I was, the drawing I'm going to do tonight is I wanted to completely break symmetry and do something totally opposite. Okay. Because in the back of my mind, I'm thinking, um, God, my brain's tired right now. What, what was the movie with Arnold Schwarzenegger? Conan. I'm thinking Conan the Barbarian um, meets Mesopotamia. Get to the chop off. I'm thinking Conan right. the Barbarian meets um, like Mesopotamian, and there's like some throne room with with nothing's on symmetry. It's all off. It's all over the place. You know. Yeah. <laughs> Random Arnold scream. Yeah. Anyway, um, so more uh, other questions, Mike? Yeah, no, that that's good. That gives me a lot to work on. So yeah. I'm I'm really enjoying this way of doing thumbnails. It was it was really uh, kind of a little bit more freeing than what I was normally doing. Okay. So let's let's plan on doing more though. Keep we keep going then. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Thanks, Mike. Mm -hmm. And then the, my props page. Those were those are kind yeah. of interesting. Those are great. But I'm going to be honest with you, Mike, and I'm just going to tell you this. Because I always mm -hmm. got to be honest with everybody, you are picking very, very detailed, hard subject matter to draw. The rounds, I mean, dude, you got ellipses, you got arches, you got ellipses in multiple positions and multiple angles. You know, just maybe have one or two ellipses and then simplify the room. Okay. You know? I'll um, try. <laughs> yeah. I'm sure you will succeed in doing that. Don't, I'll try. don't overcomplicate the heck out of it, you know? So. So that, that's why I, that's why I like this assignment is students struggle on it a little bit because it's hard. It's not easy. And, um, you know, and it, it takes a little bit of, of background and knowledge and, and, you know, and to figure it out. So anyway, okay, let's jump over okay. here. All right. Um, all right, Loki. Hi. Hi there, Loki. Um, so you have a nice, good, yeah, I, I drew this out on paper. That's why um, I went over, I went back over and did some of my line work. So I had like okay. an image of it. <laughs> okay, that's all right. Um, so I like what you have here. 
Um, I think it's working. You have a nice symmetrical base sort of room with columns in it. And um, it's leaning to a very light three point sort of upshot, which is fine too. Um, what I would like you to do is keep doing more of these little thumbnails and keep having fun. Okay. Okay. Because there's there's not much wrong with this drawing. The drawing's fine. The only thing, if I were to pick out anything wrong with it, I might say you just got to be careful of these ellipses. Like yeah, the columns were a bit funky. <laughs> yeah, to see what's happening. And again, let's go back to like what I was just talking to Mike about. So. Um, keeping this in one point or two point, you're going to be more successful. If you start going, and Mike, I hope you're listening to this. If you start going into a three point upshot where you're going to have converging columns with these Roman inspired support systems and ellipses, yeah, that's going to be pretty complicated to get in there because you're going to have to really, there's a couple things. Number one, you're getting out of part of the cone vision. Number two, you have uh, you know, a three point angle in there that can throw off the lips itself. And you really have to get in there and figure out that shape of the ellipse and how that ellipse exists inside that square. And that's the really hard part. And, and no offense to you whatsoever, it's just students will do this. And then sometimes what you do is you end up squashing an ellipse like that. When in actuality and in perspective, you have this would be the correct because I went to green and it didn't, hold on. Because you have a major and a minor axes that are relative in perspective. So if you go to that vanishing point, if you look in here, that would be the minor axes now. And then if I came back over this in orange, that would be the major, oops, hold on, I keep changing and it doesn't, there. And, and then this would be the, uh, the major axes in there, okay? So what happened in here, is your major axis is now running down like that direction. And that's what throws it off a little bit. So what I would tell you to do, do a couple more studies like this. I'm going to do another demo tonight. Break this transition, try something different, and see how it comes together. OK? OK. But just have fun. Do them as little thumbnails. Try to do, since we have time this weekend, try to do like two pages of thumbnails. Look at your reference, see what you come up with, and just have fun and keep exploring. All right? OK. All right, thanks, Loki. Good job. You're welcome. All right, uh, next here, Mr. Kai. Hello. I love it, Kai. If that's how you think and you're figuring out shapes and you're getting them mapped out, go for it, dude. Yeah, I was just trying to do like a Rorschach type of thing and hope I find something in it, you know? Uh, that's okay. I'm seeing it. I see it in the one on the, I see it in, in number one. Oops. I, I like there. the top two, basically. Yeah, I actually, um, hold on. I like number one and I like number three a lot. Oh, uh, okay. Yeah. Yeah. If that was two and that was four there, the reason why is this looks like something important here. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's yeah. a cool walkway that leads me to it. And it, mm, okay. it, it doesn't have to be symmetrical, it could be cluttered and stuff all over the place, you know? Yeah. Yeah. And then this, Look like an angel with wings. Yeah, it looks like really, an angel thing. Yeah, some really cool statue there. And then there could be other stuff like around here. And yeah, it could be of, like, I was going to maybe do yeah. like broken staircases or something, or I don't know. Yeah, just whatever. I'd make it. <laughs> Absolutely. Keep going, Kai. I totally believe in you. I Thanks. believe in your talent um, and your ability to process and come up with cool designs. You've always done great so just have fun with it thank you yeah i just need yeah. to turn out another page pretty much yeah keep going oh, just a whole bunch of them i did one really bad page and yeah. i just ditched them all so it's this all right. is what i did like today so i just need I, to keep going i wish you guys could see me when i'm frustrated when my temper comes out i'm like sitting in here and i'll be like trying to draw a character and i'm just throwing paper balls behind me and i'll get mad and i start breaking pencils and i just and then I just got to go leave. I got to go like hit a punching bag or go ride my bike or go shoot a gun or do something to get me to relieve the stress. You know what I mean? So, yeah. yeah. <laughs> All right. Shooting shotguns at speed is a great release um, that, for me that works. I just go to call my buddy, go to a street range and sit there, pull, 
and just shoot skeet. And then I come back from there and that shotgun like kicks the ass out of my shoulder. And then I come back. I'm like, okay, I'm ready to draw again. I'm just sort of mess up your drawing arm. And then (laughs) I know, right. I know tomorrow when I get my shot, because my dad got his and um, yeah, it's all right. I'm recording. Um, I'm going to be super sore. So I'm not going to feel like drawn after, uh, excuse me, on Friday, I meant to say. So anyway, yeah, keep going, Kai. These are gorgeous, you know. Thank you. So wouldn't you all agree you need stress reliefs? Everyone needs a stress relief. There's different ways. Some people take it inside and they let it dwell over time. Actually, to be honest with you, that's the difference between men and women is that women are really good at taking it and releasing a little bit of time and a little bit of a time. Guys, um, I'll quote Bill Burr on this. We take it. And we stuff it into a jar and we put a lid on it. And we put it on a shelf somewhere. And then that little jar of stress turns into anger that we use later. You know what I mean? So it's like everyone needs to go for a walk. I mean, I'm, are you kidding me? With art and drawing and design, it'll wear you out. All right. Whose are these? They're really nice. Mine. Excellent. They're very fun. Yeah, thanks. If you want to get a better idea, you can take a look at the reference sheets that I I, play, I posted. Yeah, sure. I Yeah, right here. These look yeah. cool. I saw them when I downloaded them. They look great. Um, love this type of gothic window right there. I love those. Those are really cool. I always wonder how I would love to learn more about how that gothic influence came into part of the church, you know? Because it looks more evil to me than it does good, you know? But anyway. I actually um, studied that. Um a little bit so a lot of it has to do with um conveying the idea of transcendence and so you have high things with sort of dark areas that are unknown it points to sort of the like the harder to understand aspects of god um, or the more infinite things that are sort of beyond our understanding really Um, so yeah so it's the uh, apathetic uh theology which is like um some of the early theologians they would have like and I don't want to spend too much time on this, um, but they would take about like our human concept and like our human concept of power, our human concept of goodness, and talk about how God's goodness sort of transcends that and and all of those sorts of things. Gotcha. And so it actually translates into the art where they're trying to convey sort of this this unknown. Because as soon as you can make something visual, our minds can apprehend it and and sort of circum circumvent it and so it uses art to sort of make something that goes outside of what we can apprehend with our minds okay um and so that's how the design influence um cool it cathedrals and other things like that all right i um i had a chance to go to a couple cathedrals that i really wanted to go to for religious aspects like i went to the chart cathedral because in chart they're supposed to have the cape that the Virgin Mary had on, they have it inside the church. Like, I didn't know this, like, isn't it true that a lot of these big churches have a holy possession of some kind inside them? Spread out, Mike, have you ever heard about that? Yeah, yeah, the relics, yeah. Some, yeah, the different uh, relics. And they have relics. A, a buddy of mine, who's a very devout Catholic, studied on this, and he went to Italy for a while and was telling me about some of this. I just find it fascinating. Anyway, Kayla, there's, you have a lot of really cool spookiness happening in both of these. Um, I got to admit, there's something that I really like about the top one, the mm-hmm. great symmetry and has this really nice flow and some really fun designs in there. Um, I think you're just scratching the surface of what you could do. This has this sort of nice, evil, symmetrical feel to it as well. It's quite mm-hmm. interesting. Um, it does get me a little freaked out when I start to make me think of Hellraiser, the movie, <laughs> when I see these chains coming down here, locked up to these, what are these here? The sculptures. Like some sculptures, yeah, that's just, that's spooky when there's chains around a sculpture, like the chains <laughs> are there to keep it from going out and killing people or something, you know? Yeah. So um, I like what you're doing here. I, I think you're on a right mm-hmm. pathway. Um, the reference you have is absolutely beautiful. Some really nice um, ideas here. And uh, I would just tell you, just keep going. And this is great too. Look at these little, this lantern here is gorgeous. I really like the idea of some type of old sculpture like this. It's broke and there's like gold in the middle sort of pouring out. I think that's a mm-hmm. clever idea. 
Um, yeah. Yeah, I had a lot of fun. I'm definitely not set on final design yet, so we'll yeah. spend the weekend keeping These are gorgeous. Out. You could have like those overlapping in the foreground, yeah. you know? Yeah, and in this, yeah, that's quite wonderful. Keep doing what you're doing. It's good stuff, okay? Thank, thank you. All right, very nice. Thank you. Excellent. God, it gets me a little scared, you know? I love my spoopiness. <laughs> I know. I was telling a student of mine before that I, uh, I, I, ever since I was a kid, I had a thing against too much blood and gore. Like I can't watch, even like I have a hard time watching movies with like lots of evil in it. I just, the, the Greek Orthodox part in me, Christian shut that off and like, I don't want to see anything that deals with evil. I don't want to know about it, you know? So yeah, but um, you have a good spookiness that's happening in there. Keep it up, okay? All right, Mr. Luce, this is gorgeous reference here, buddy. Thank you, Boy, where look at this in the corner. I know Haley would like Haley would like that one. Where's that from? Uh, which one? Uh, oh, I think that's um, I, I don't know. I typed in movie set. So okay. Be the Gosh, if that doesn't look like a very well put together Egyptian treasure room, I don't know what is. I mean, that's absolutely gorgeous. Just look at the idea here of the vase with the spears in it. You have the statue of Ramsey right there. You have um, these other statues. You have collections of gold, more vases. You have a staff up there. You have the giant columns holding everything together. That's that's very nicely uh, put together. That is quite. This is very cool. That I think that was from Conan. No. Yeah, yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I remember my Conan. I remember seeing that when I was a kid. Look, there he is, right there. Good old Arnold. Yeah, yeah I like the, the monkey. I like the, the head on the hand. Yeah, uh, I put him into the throne. Okay. Yeah, you got some cool stuff in there, buddy. It's very nicely done. Good reference. What's that from? What's this in the upper left corner? What movie is that? That is the movie. What is that? The mummy. Oh, that's from the mummy, huh? Oh, I remember that yeah. spot. When, yeah, I remember that now. It's all, it's, yeah, that big old treasure room. That yeah. Had. And they have the little black beetles running around in there, right? Yeah. Yep. Very cool. Great reference, John. Very nice, sir. Thank you. All right. Did you do any uh, drawings yet? No. That's okay. No, not yet. Uh, they That's were all right. pretty good. You got a beautiful out. reference. Start working on stuff this weekend, okay? All right. Thanks, John. Thank you, sir. All right. Naomi. That's me. That is you. When you turn on your mic, yeah. Um, all right. These look good. Keep going. Thank you. Do you feel like you're getting some ideas now? Uh, yes, I just kind of, um, like I did like half of them like last night and then I just did more today. Okay. Yeah, keep going. I think you're on your way. Keep having fun, okay? So, so like um, next meeting, are we still making thumbnails or just- Yeah, I'm going to give you guys, since everyone felt a little frustrated. Um, I'm going to give you a little bit more time to keep exploring and you can do- uh, between thumbnails and roughs, if you like. Okay, sounds okay. good. All right, excellent. Thank you. All right. Um, and who's with these? Uh, that's mine, Greg's. Okay, hey, Greg. Hey. All right. Um, I like what you're doing here where I see this chest sort of elevated, I would recommend try to get that, like you're zoomed in real close, try to pull the camera out so we can see more of what, what, what might be around there. Um, and then on this guy here, don't do anything floating. No floating okay. blocks or cities or buildings, anything like that, it can be really hard to draw. Um, this this guy's cool. But I feel like I'm just looking through an opening and there's stuff back there. You could use part of that to frame a drawing and then have more of a throne room like in the back here. 
that really yeah. like something I would see like in Indiana Jones or something, you know? Mm-hmm. Um, and then this is, it's one angle of the room. I would probably, um, I think it's, you're on your way with this. I would just do a little bit more. Um, try to avoid, you're, you're not quite in a square, but you're getting a little close to a square shape. It's going to be harder to compose in. So um, I, I would sort of take these two and start combining them. Think about foreground, midground, a little bit of distance. Try to get some uh, elements in there that help. Remember, you can have the grouping of some of the treasure, uh, some of the other props, and you know you can have some stairs, the throne itself. Some of those other elements will help you uh, sort of bring this together. Okay. All right. All right. Cool. Keep going, dude. All right. Okay. Keep plugging away. Thank you. All right. Next over here, we had. All right. Very cool. And this is Chris, right? Who's, why am I, who's Matthew? Or Carol, there, I'm looking up there. I'm tripping out. Sorry, <laughs> my brain is on empty today. Um, I Like I was telling everyone, I've been getting up with my dog who's been sick and might be on his way out soon. So um, I haven't been getting a lot of sleep lately. Um, all right, Carolyn. Um, it's great. It's really fun to look at. This is, look at how fun that is with those arches in there. I really like this, how there's this like group of treasure and then it's sort of surrounded by stuff, you know? Mm -hmm. That could be a very fun idea too. Um, I also like this. I like seeing depth in a piece in reference because it helps guide me a little bit more on how to structure things. And one of the things you guys will notice in some of this reference, uh, some of it is also where a king would sit um where you have like a it's like a throne room but and it's elevated you're always going to see that elevation come up going up and elevated and these so that's quite nice uh yeah i i'd say take a couple of these you like did you do any sketches just there just one that's great yeah you're starting to come up with some ideas so that that's great you could do another one do a couple more like that start putting some groups of props in there and uh that's wonderful just keep going. I, there. I, I really like that cut ceiling in there, you know? <laughs> I had the same problem as Selena, where I started doing these rough or this rough. And then I was like, oh, no, I, if, I, if, I, if I'm not using a ruler, it's, it's going to be bad. <laughs> yeah, well, it, it's like there's a can be a, a line between both sides. One side allows you to be more expressive. The other side is constructing the building first because when, when I taught this class last time, I had a lot of students that sort of um, had problems with either or, and they tended to be more problems with the perspective. Students didn't know how to craft the perspective and make the room look different and fun. And they kept getting rooms that would look like this. I kept getting rooms that were like squared rooms like that. And students kept asking me, like, what's wrong? Why does my room look so boring? What's and I kept telling them, I said, boxes are boring. Whenever you design in a box, it's not going to be that fun. So we need to figure out how to break out of that box and get to, to other shapes. So um, I like what you have here. You can add so much more to that. There's nothing wrong with that drawing. You could go back over that and fill it easily by placing stuff in the foreground, by placing stuff in the midground, stuff in the background here. You could fill it easily. You can also try doing a couple other versions of different rooms. So that's a yeah. great little drawing you could add to it. And maybe after I do tonight, tonight's demo, you go back in and do another version of something a little bit different too. Yeah, I definitely wanted to do more. Okay, so. yeah, go into it, keep plugging away. And uh, you know, the ruler is your friend. So you can <laughs> use it when it works for you. If it doesn't work for you, ditch it and go freehand. And sometimes when I go freehand, I got to come back with the ruler and check stuff, you know? Well, it's, it, it was just that I like wanted to try working rough at first, but then I just, you know, <laughs> I, but now that I, that you mentioned that it's okay for us to go yeah. rough on these like ruler lists on these first ones, I want to, I want to really try doing a bunch of them, like, okay. you know, just like rough. Okay. Carolyn, I think that's great. Uh, keep plugging ahead. Okay. Good job. Thank you.
All right, my pleasure. Thank you. All right. And let me close this guy. Mr. Sizemore. Yes. Very cool. You got some techie stuff there. Mm -hmm. You got some more real good tech. Also some gold, some chess. That's really cool right there. Nice reference in here. It's gorgeous. Thank you. Yeah, I, I definitely want to try and go towards like a sci-fi futuristic setting here. Um, you know, trying to add a lot of uh, maybe geometric shapes and kind of circles um, in the environment. Cause, like there's a lot, there's a lot of circle shapes like surrounding the different thrones. Mm -hmm. But um, but I'm also in, interested in maybe incorporating statues and jewels and antiquities and stuff with the treasure. Okay. Are you, some of this looks very techy and then some of it looks a little bit more like older and, and uh, medieval-ish. Would, it, would, it, be, would it be strange if it was a mix between the two? No, it could be a Predator throne room from the movie Predator. Oh, okay. You ever seen that movie? There's a part in there oh, yeah. where the, I forget one of the, the guy, I forget which movie it was. I love all that whole series where he's inside some candy. The room. Huh? Oh, I said want some candy. He, Predator 2, he quotes the kid. Oh, so okay. has, yeah. No, that's two. There was another one done was the last one um, were the, the doctor that had the poison on the knife. Oh, I didn't see. I think one. thought it was that one. No, no way. I'm no, I'm, I'm misthinking them. There was one of them where at the very end, the lead character ends up in the throne room and you see like all this stuff collected from these battles they'd fought over time. And that's when you realize like, wow, these predators just travel around to fight. They're like, they're like alien Spartans is what they are, you mm -hmm. know? And then they keep something from their victim to remember the fight, which is what serial killers do, right? So, yeah. and then at the end, he threw him like a Civil War musket from somebody. And that was at the end of two. Was at that the, the end? end? Yeah, that was he the end defeats it. Uh, yeah, the he predators come to collect the body and they, they throw him a gun. That's like an old gun with Danny yeah. Glover. Yeah, that's right. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, it was pretty cool. Yeah, I'm a big, I love stuff like that, you know, so... Yeah, this is gorgeous, Aaron. It's good stuff. Okay, thank you. Yeah, so start, uh, go ahead. You can start cranking. You got all your reference done. You can start plugging away on drawing, okay? Okay, for all sure. Right, thank you, sir. Thank you. My pleasure. All right, one minute. View, let's hide these express. All right, Mr. Andre. Hi, sir. How you doing, buddy? It's good stuff. Looks thank very you. nice. In there, good reference, great ideas. Um, that's um, when did you do that one? That's like on the semester four, like long time ago. But I'm just kind of thinking, oh, I can extend this idea but more further. Than yeah, I remember when you did that before. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's still cool. I still like that idea. Thank you. Yeah, so okay. Mm -hmm. Um yeah, it's good. Got good reference here. Lots of good stuff. And then here are your thumbnails. Those are really, really nice. They came out very well. So when I was telling to some of you guys about the distance, this is sort of what I'm talking about. Look at how, so there is some symmetry, but then there's some off symmetry in here. So look at the distance between here to there. You know what I mean? Um, that gives me good foreground, midground, and background. That really helps fill the room up quite nicely. Um, this is great too. I love seeing the staggered like horns in there. You have something over here. Yeah, there is a little bit of symmetry, but it also feels offset because you have something round, you have something straight. So it doesn't have to be like a perfect balance of exact symmetry. You know what I mean? So, mm -hmm. um, those are really nice, Andre. You did a very great job on these. Thank you, sir. Yeah, they, they felt. Yeah. yeah. 
Oh, I have a question about the symmetry thing again. Um, so I'm just trying to put this together in my head. So for an in, from an environment design or interior design perspective, having that kind of the, almost that two point shot is great because it really gives you a nice showcase of the room. But maybe like for a storytelling perspective, where you actually have characters and maybe somebody sitting on the throne, then you want to slap it into like a really centered one point sort of thing, right? Um, or possibly, right? Like if you're doing like a real power shot or something like that. So it, it depends what's happening with what I call the path, the animation pathway of the character. If you remember in the staging for story class, we talked a little bit when characters are walking and they're going in transition from point A to point B, that's right. typically going to be a shot done <laughs> in two point perspective where we see them walking like this. So that's when we tend to see that in film and in storyboarding. And then when if there's going to be something really important where if we have a king sitting up here on his throne and then there are three people that are going to walk in here that are about to be judged and they're surrounded by his guards with swords uh, or battle axes and swords you would maybe probably have a shot more like that okay that that's helpful I, i'm i'm yeah. just now putting that together so that that makes sense of what we're doing because I'm like, oh, but one point and two point. And, and now I, I get think you. of some good examples for that. Did any of you guys watch the Viking series? It was on, I think it was on AMC for a while. Um, there are different Vikings. So whenever you go in to see those Vikings, uh, the lead, the head Viking guy is centered like that in the room and people are walking up and they stop in front of him. Uh, another good example of when you would see that would be in um god i just watched this movie the other night too on netflix the other it was a couple of weeks ago um it was about the um it's a good story it's about the the king of france it was like this young boy and then he has to mature and become wiser um that was an interesting story there was also another one with chris pine where chris pine played like this outlaw and anyway, there's a couple parts in all of those movies where they go in to see the king. And whenever you go in to see the king, you're going to have a shot like number one. And, you know, or you can even have a shot like this, like number three. This is still a, pretty much identical to one point. It's just slightly shifted. That's all. It looks like it's two point, but these are still horizontal in there. That's, okay. right, that's right on that edge between both, Mike. That's helpful, that, that helps kind of clarify it for me. Yeah. So thanks and, for- Oh, sure, that's why some of these I find very interesting. Like number one, that's a great power shot for a king. Um, I really like number two, number three are very nicely done. There's great information. Look at the overlap here with that and the barrels and then seeing all this there, that's a beautiful composition, you know? Um, so, there's quite a few. Andre, you killed it, dude. You hit some major home runs tonight, man. You really did a good job, buddy. I hope you're proud of yourself. Thank you. Because yeah. you can easily develop any of these and turn them into uh, to really fine pieces. I mean, those are the ones I like. I like one, two, three. I like seven. I like nine. The other ones are really great drawings, too, but those are the ones I like the most. Okay. You know, do you have a favorite out of them, Andre? I'm flexible. I can choose whatever you want. I like that answer. I'm flexible. <laughs> yeah. Well, <laughs> what do you guys think? Let's take a vote for Andre. What do you guys think out of those? Do you have a, a favorite? That's hard. It is hard because everyone has something different or unique about it. I got to admit, I think I'm stuck between number one, number three, and number six is cool, but what I, I go to like number seven because it has more stuff in it. But I'm probably going with number one, two, or three, uh, and probably nine. It's really hard. They all have different cool things about them, you know? Maybe if I can tell the challenge of doing this project, because the title of this project, The Throne Room with a Treasure. So I'm just kind of thinking, how is the big room with filled with a lot of treasure, but people needs to walk? So it's meant like not too big, not too small. That's kind of challenging. That's why there's yeah. like five and number six. So I feel like uh, it's too big for a treasure room, even then. 
So, yeah. Yeah. And you're, that's one thing about seven that I didn't like is that I start going through these columns and I get lost way over there. Mm -hmm. But I like all this stuff that was in here was very cool. And I think that's what I really like about some of these up here. This feels like a like Mongolian throne room up here on the left with the large tusks in there reminds me like I'm in a different country, a different place. It's not totally tight symmetry. There's a little bit more expressiveness in it. This one over here reminds me of like I'm in part of Arabia or Turkey, you mm -hmm. know, because I have these little round themes, which are a little bit of a Arabic influence and in design. And that starts to come out and give me a nice feel in there, you know, so they all have something sort of different working in them that I think is quite wonderful, you know. I yeah. might be choosing them based on the majority number. People say three or seven then, but I think it's three then probably. Yeah. I, I think three is a great composition. Number one's great, nine's great, you know. Okay. So yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Thank you, Andre. Beautiful dude. Thank you, sir. Really great. Thank Excellent. you. Also for others. Yeah. All right. Um, what time is it? It's eight. Perfect time. Okay, that's everyone's stuff that I had. Did I miss anybody? Why don't we take a quick five minute break? I'm gonna go get my dog his insulin shot real quick. And then when we come back, I'm gonna sit and sketch a little bit. Is that cool? Okay, so let's do that. And I'm gonna no ruler. I'm gonna go crazy. I'm just gonna sketch and throw something together and see what I come up with. I have an idea or two floating in my mind, all right? So I'll see you guys back in five minutes, okay? I'm gonna pause the recorder real quick. I have this idea that maybe there's a throne, some type of chair or something, and it's, I want there to be a design to it, but I don't know what I want right now. And I want it elevated slightly. Remind me to show you guys stairs before we finish today too, you know? I'm just thinking there's some type of pile of an old chest or something here on the side.
Um, I had an idea and it's not really coming out the way I thought it would be, but I'm going to keep going with it. I had this idea of there being like floating stuff in a waterway, sort of, but that's not really like there would be a mass of land or, or something like this. And then there would be a, like a little bit of an edge to it. And then there's like lava surrounding it, you know. And then there would be something back here in the foreground too. Oops. I hate it when Photoshop does this. So I'm getting a delay when I go to draw. Every time I go to touch the screen, I have a second or two delay because of the, the recorder. And then if I touch it in the wrong place, it'll make that, that line zigzag back and forth. So here, I almost wonder if I can make that taller. I just wanted to use my ruler, but I'm not going to. I wanted to try to get a, like a sword in here. A couple of times I put a line down and nothing comes out because Photoshop's dragging quite a bit, but that's okay. Um, so, Phil, how are you thinking of what props you want to draw right now? I mean, like, how do you decide I want to make a sword or like a skull or whatever? Like, because all this stuff has to tie together in a way. Yeah, I'm just sort of throwing it in there what would look or feel interesting. Like I want there to be a, hold on, let me switch the red real quick. So I want there to be a, a counter angle here. And then I want something to push you into there. And I wanted something to push you back up there. I wanted this shape to push you back there to move you around the composition a little bit more. Um, does that sort of make sense? And, yeah. and when things are staggered, when, when they're all stacked up, they look boring, you know, right? So it, having, you'll notice I did the shape like that there. Do you see that? That's my yeah. overall read of my silhouette. And then I'm going to put other stuff in there to break it, like that little chalice there, a gold coin sticking out, um, the part of the skull that's, you know, might be sitting up on top of that rock. It's there. Um, there needs to be, you know, maybe there's, I don't know, maybe there's a light, like a, a necklace or something that wraps around here a little bit. Um, there needs to be, I have to show the shape and form of that object too. Uh, so I need to wrap it with something like putting, you know, gold coin around it like this, tilt it at some different angles. 
you know, and then try to group that together a little bit. Maybe there's another, uh, a bowl, some type of wooden, or excuse me, wooden, uh, some type of important gold bowl of some kind of stick and part in there. You know, I don't know. I just think of the prop and just sort of throw it in there. And maybe there's um, part of a medallion end of a, come on, I won't draw, of a cross that's coming in here. And maybe part of that gets exposed a little there. And maybe that cross comes out a little and it's there. It's sort of covered a little bit, you know, and then I'll refine some of the edge here like this, just thinking of gold coin, you know, going there. So it, I, I try not to put any emphasis on one thing. I'm just thinking about the grouping of, of all the props fitting together, you know? Yeah. And, yeah, and I like to keep things in that grouping sense. I was thinking of these vases and bosses could have gold or items inside them and they could be lightly turned, you know, inside that, that composition. So that's just a framing element to keep my eye sort of moving in the piece a little bit, sort of as this is. And then um, I was, hold on a minute, I had another idea here. Now, now I'm looking back at this and I, this is too, uh, to me, it's too large. So I want to take that and transform it, make it a little bit more, uh-oh. Oh no, I just drew on the, yep. <laughs> Phil, right. how could you? <laughs> no, actually, that's all right. It's no big deal because I could turn it into a tunnel that way. It's sort of intentional drawing on the blue. That's how we would work with tracing paper. So that's all right. No worries. I ain't going to go anywhere. I could, I could then go in and light that real quick. So now I'm thinking if that was raised a little bit more, it had a little bit more emphasis to it, that can maybe be a little bit more important there. So the way I'm thinking up this room, is that there, you know, maybe, oops, this drops down here somehow. And um, I did like this idea of lava coming in there somehow. So let me let me try to focus on that idea. I like the idea of there being um, patches in here like this. And then this is elevated like into the lava, you know what I mean? And then it's just bubbling lava all around. So imagine if this was like a liquid and you would see like bubbles and whatever sort of coming through there. Because um, that gave me another idea in a minute to sort of emphasize that other area. So then in here, I want something to also push me back up towards the, the throne. So I might think of, you know, something that's at an angle there. So this is where, this is where I'm like, my brain right now is craving reference. So I'm I'm wondering like, what should I, I don't wanna have a sword, I already did a sword, already had it at that angle. Um, maybe what I can do is, okay, what about a barrel? What if I had a barrel? Maybe there's a barrel of something and the barrel's cracked in half. So I could sketch an idea for a barrel here and maybe the barrel's going this way a little bit. Should be a little bit wider. And maybe the barrel's cracked a little and we can see this, oops. The metal band of the barrels coming like wrapping around it, sort of like this, and maybe it's breaking it a little bit. And then part of this is wood. And maybe there's inside there, there's like rounded, oops, way too dark. This is that drawing brush I gave you guys. I'm just barely pressing. I really like the way stuff comes out of it. It just has a nice loose feel to it, you know? And then, so maybe that's cracked like that. And then I want there to be another mound of sort of gold in here. Maybe different cup or element, something over here, turn on its side. Um, what else could I put in there? Maybe something like gold that wraps around like gold necklace or 
I don't know, waistband or something. So you don't, you don't have to draw every single element, right? And over define it. I don't know what the stick is. I just feel like putting it in there. Maybe it's a mini dagger. Like that. <laughs> Um, I just had this idea that this could be like a, I, I want a walking stone or something that points into this direction. So I'm going to just draw a doled up stone in here that feels maybe thick and a little heavy and it drops down a little bit. See the edge of another stone in there. Have you given any thought to the room, to the like to the walls? Um, I'm going to do that last because I want everything to point to here. I'm thinking I was thinking of a cave or something with just various walls that come up that have no rhyme or reason because I wanted to break symmetry if I could, if that sort of makes sense. You know, so Phil, for this for your approach to this, it seems like at least in this instance, you started with the object groupings. And you wanted to get them in the right relationship to each other to, to draw the attention in the right way. Yeah. And then the room, the shape of the room is sort of like an afterthought, right? It's, you're, yeah. you're really focused on like, really, it seems like you're starting from a place of like raw composition. Yeah, dive it through. into it. This is when I rough. But actually, to be honest, this comes from thumbnail. This is just me. I'm just doing it larger for you guys, but when I sit in my little sketchbook, you know, this is what I do, you know? Um, I just sit and have fun. And see, like I noticed all these are the same shape, so I want to change that a little bit. So that's why I was trying to get my eraser a little bit larger, but Photoshop's not wanting to work with me. It usually it memorizes the eraser being separate, but then when I switch it back to my pen end, then I got to make my brush smaller again. So that's a little annoying that's doing that. So I'm just going to go back to my drawing size that I had and try to make this clump here a little bit different size. And then maybe there's an offset stone or something in there a little bit. Hold on, let me just throw a light line in here and try to break up. And I'll come back to that a little bit later. So yeah, you can sort of see I'm putting things in clumps that will unite, I guess, if I can bring it back to the piece itself, you know? Um. Lava waterfall, lava waterfall, please. Lava waterfall. Hold on, now I want to put that even higher. And back a little bit more. Okay, let me figure this out. Oh I need yeah, lava flowing right down the right, dropping off. Okay, keep that idea, because I did have sort of an idea or something like that. But what I wanted to do is try to figure out how I could, hold on, I got to get this right. Give me a second. Let me just, I'm too busy talking. Let me, give me a minute. Let me just get the chair to the right height where I want it, maybe about there. I wanted the chair to feel like it was on. The problem is, is in my brain, I need to know, I need to really nail down my horizon line. Let's say my horizon line's there because I'm off now, I would see it would be the other way. I've raised it higher now. So I'm going to be looking up at it like that. So I need to really get that down. And then once I drop, maybe somewhere down in here, I'm under the horizon line. And then I could see where the base would be, let's say. So give me a minute here. I want to see if I can get another like old messed up stair or something that might come up here. And then my horizon line's there, so right after that. 
stair, it's only going to be upwards. So, mm -hmm. so, so Phil, how are you avoiding overthinking what you're putting in here as you're going? Because uh, like the way that the way that Joe taught me to think was like more practical like in in this situation he would be like well yeah this stuff's floating in lava but you gotta think how is the guy that sits on the throne gonna get over there and so then that would make me like stop and be like oh crap i gotta like redo my composition now to make it to where like somebody could actually get to the throne and sit in it and well it, like it, stuff it, like that just but you, know. you haven't seen what i put in the throne yet i might just have the throne chair this might be an abandoned room that no one uses and that throne what if the chair itself was captured from a king and they just put it in there you know so like nobody uses it it's just another prop basically yeah hey wait real quick look at my screen real quick right right here. <laughs> zang you with us buddy <laughs> You look I was like, like, why is Phil watching? Well, why is Phil writing my name? <laughs> no, I, no I, I'm right here. I've been right here the whole time. I know. I'm just giving you a hard time. I thought you were out for the count, man. So um, <laughs> I'm, I'm kind of close, but I'm in there. That's all right. No worries. <laughs> so, um, you know, Robert, it, it's it, some of what Joe does, though, he's on a show that's very specific. OK, so yeah. he has to follow architecture guidelines. It's in a certain time period. It has a lot to do with uh, the historical background of religion and how religion advanced through Christianity. So you have he's locked into certain things. When you're not locked into something, like um, I, I have this one rough drawing I can show you guys. When I was at Big Idea once, they gave me an assignment of drawing the, I had to draw the interior and exterior of a soup factory. But the soup factory was where the villain was making poisonous soup. Okay. so. I had free reign to do whatever I want. So what I did is I imagined this old abandoned Catholic church. It would be even more Gothic and evil hanging off of a cliff top. And inside there would be large baths of soup. I pitched that idea and everybody loved it. I showed the reference and I started doing some drawings for it, you know? So maybe this, you know, I don't know, maybe this thing, maybe my little chair shape here is, you know, um, let me zoom in there for a minute and make my brush a little bit smaller. But what if my what if this is abandoned? It's my idea was the chair had gold in it. It had like gold and piles of it. This might be an abandoned room that no one uses anymore because the king took over and he just fills all his gold in here, but there's lava around there and it's like a very dangerous place. So and then don't ask me why I just have this idea that there would be like dragon claws, maybe like hanging over this, you know, on that end. And you'd see this like little dragon arms here. If I can get Photoshop's really starting to lag on me. So bear with me for a minute. Let me try to get that sketched in. Because I like that elbow claw out there and I don't need it to feel symmetrical. And, you know, I can change any of this. This is just sort of, you know, trying to have fun and come up with an idea. Um, Maybe this there's like little angles in there or something to make it look a little bit more evil. And then I was thinking, what if there was gold in there? What if there's gold items in the chair? What if, um, I don't know, let me see if I can sketch something real quick. If there's something piled here, something here, something over there. Um, it'd be cool if I can get this angle in here, right? What if there's like an old battle ax here? By the way, this is why I love this freaking brush so much. It just has a nice soft edge in the way that it draws. It's quite inviting. It's just a lot of fun. You know. Come on, it's not drawing. Okay, I'm looking at that battle axe and I, oops, I don't like the back of it, so I'm going to erase it and change it. And then make it more like a traditional axe. I 
What if there's like little dragon spikes on the back of the chair? And then they come up and there's more knuckles again. I don't know if that looks right, <laughs> but that's okay for right now. I'm going to put another pile of something here. Oh, yeah, large plates. There's always large plates, like in piles of treasure and stuff, you know? Sorry, I'm getting frustrated. I'm drawing. Can you see my cursor moving and nothing comes out of it? I'm like going to put a line down in Photoshop is being very temperamental with what I'm doing. Okay. Um, all right, let me zoom out real quick. And the other idea that I had so I'm trying to do opposite. I'm just trying to do props and then not worry about the room from what I showed you last time. Uh, if my horizon line is about there, if I have some hangy um, pots in here. So if my horizon line is there, I think my lips might be, be probably larger than that, but that's okay for right now. Nice and wide. Okay, here's the hard part. Got to draw an outside loop. Hold on, I got to go back. Yeah, I was starting to get off a little bit there. Hold on, I'm still tilted. Okay. It didn't come out quite the way I thought it would, but I thought it would be cooler. Put it on that side. And then I think what I might do now is just try to figure out the, the back walls. Just draw a couple of walls like I'm in a cave or something. I know horse skull, right? I did think about that. I had this idea. I might have put too much little detail on that chair. I had an idea of there being like a, a skull in here like this. If you have this large horse uh, animal and like certain 
they have that large nose cavity like this. And then that could be in there, it could be pretty cool. And then that sort of comes forward. And then there could be like little teeth. Come on, draw baby. Could be sitting up on the top, maybe. Just to enhance the silhouette a little bit more. I don't know if that's a horse skull, but it just looks sort of cool to me. It could be something else that's there. Um, and then I, so directionally lines, I want things to go uh, that way, right? Somehow. Um, I don't want lines to go that way and pull me away. So what I was thinking is there's a little bit of handmade built items right there like stone and carving. So maybe there's a part of a back wall here that's slightly tilted that looks like it's handmade a little bit. So let me give it some thickness. Sorry, my hand's shaking. Uh, where's the symmetry? Technically, the symmetry I'm thinking would be something like that. And I'm just trying to divide up the back wall space and figure out how I would do that. So I'm actually those lines I put down. Um, I don't know if I'm liking those. So I'm going to go maybe with the cave idea with stone. Maybe there's Maybe they look, look like these large looking teeth or something on the side. Maybe what if we're inside the mouth of a, another skull or something, you know? It, if I have more of these jagged shapes here, they're going to do more to keep my eye focused on that back area, if that makes sense. I'm wanting there to be teeth on the other side now to have it maintain symmetry. Well, it doesn't have to be perfect, but I yeah, I can cheat it here. How's that, Mike? That's better. Yeah, that looks really good. OK. Um. It's like a giant fire breathing molten spewing dragon eight 
the throne room of somebody who had killed a small dragon. Could be like leftover pieces from that, right? That would be foreground element. Now I want to change this more. Oops. What are the things on the ceiling being held by? I don't know yet. <laughs> I'll figure that out in a minute. You guys aren't turning to be like the environmental police on me, are you? <laughs> he said we'll cross the bridge when we get there. Yeah. I think it just be bolted in there somehow. I just like those large pots like that sometimes, you know. Hold on. So let me get let me try to figure out this lava in the back here. It should be liquid and like one like this, and maybe a couple other little bubbles. And then So I like things in threes. So it makes sense to me to put maybe another tooth like here. Thick and thin, right? Just keep these lines nice and thin. They're just on the back wall. I'm getting frustrated. I'm drawing and nothing's coming out. There it goes. It, just put some lines in the back here and then leave it alone. That's really cool looking. So I was think oops. Well, doesn't that count as too many detail? Why? It's just a rough. I know, but like, um, like if if I start going in there like that, it wouldn't be called a thumbnail anymore. Oh, uh, I guess you're doing a rough, huh? Yeah, it's doing a rough, a rough idea in there. I mean, I I can still solidify it more, right? I can change some things. There's not too much in the left foreground, which is fine. I don't mind that. Um, 
actually, now I had an idea. I, I like these large like teeth guys in here. So here, it could be cool if I had some overlap. How do I draw that though? If it was here off screen, it would have to come up. It would overlap maybe too much. Maybe it was here and sort of went like this and overlap like that. Is that too much, you think? You could make a broken tooth, like have it be really thick and then kind of. Hold on. Benefit of layers, right? Yeah. Uh, I don't know, that could possibly, I just feel like I it lost a little bit of energy in there, but that's all right, what the heck. Just erase that, create some good overlap in there. There, like it, it's a dragon tooth cave, skulls in it, with a skull in it. Okay, so I did think about groupings when I drew that. Um, I was thinking about keeping. Now I know it might look really busy, but in the back of my head, it makes sense to me because what I would do is I would merge all of this together, like I just did. And then I would lighten it a little bit like this, darken it, excuse me, which is a technique that we do like, hold on, in Photoshop. Wait a minute, let me go back here. Let me put the line in like this. And let me see how much of my line did I put? That's not too bad. Uh, can I fix this real quick? Give me one minute. What I'm going to do is take that. I'm going to copy that and then deselect. I'm going to paste that on a new layer. Oops. Excuse me. Edit. Paste special. We're going to paste it into place. So I have it on another layer. There it is. I'm going to come back to this drawing that I did. And then I'm going to select all of that. And I'm going to fill it. Fit. And fill. Okay. There. Now that's done. Deselect. Let me erase this on the side. I'm, oops. Erase that. Then let me turn this on and select color range. You're going to select that. It's there. Oh, well, that's because I'm not on the right layer. I almost got mad. Select color range, that. OK. Still not doing it. Don't show me again. OK, let's try the old fashioned way. There it goes. Deselect. There we go. Merge it with this layer. There. So I want to put all the line on there. So now what I was going to do is, hold on, I have this problem. Sometimes Photoshop does this. I can't figure out how to get it. It's when I use the mouse. It'll do that skipping thing. It won't let me go back. So what I could do to do a quick tonal study of this now is if I take this layer here, and control levels. And if I darken this a little bit, uh, I could start imagining, I can start erasing, like imagining light coming through this, hitting different parts. It's a, it's a cool way to work. And then I can drop the line opacity down like this. And then I could start brushing in little highlights and stuff pretty quickly and effectively. So if I wanted to see what it would look like, I just come to this layer here. I go to my magic eraser, I drop down to about 10, and then I start just rotating between like one and four, and I might start erasing some things on here. I'm imagining light maybe is coming from the top 
So some of this might get hit a little bit down in here. Some of that might fade back a little up in there. That might get hit. That would get hit. See how cool that starts to look? It's a quick way to go in there and start toning something on there. And I can make this like all focal point stuff in here. And once I get some of that light idea in there, what I would do is create another layer right here. And I would call that my shadows. Because this is how we would work in tracing paper. We would smudge and smear. And then I would come back with uh, my brush, but I need a painterly brush like this guy. And um, go back to my blue. And then I would start, uh oh, that's not blue. It doesn't feel like blue. That's why I'm on gray, dummy. There, and now if I start putting in some shadows to that on the shadow side, You start to get some pretty cool effects pretty quickly. And then you can keep building it off of this. Oh, I'm sorry, Photoshop's being very unresponsive. Give me one minute. There it goes. Sorry, my phone keeps pinging as if my house is on fire. Now, I can't lift this brush up right now because if I do, I'm painting at 40%. And if I lift the brush off the surface, it'll turn it into like a marker. Can you just uh, alt click and then go to 100%? Yeah, I could, but I'm being lazy. That's a good idea, Mike. I could just click the value of what's there and go to 100. But and just block it in like that, let's say. Okay, so now I have some foreground locked in. You know, and then I can keep coming back into the piece, keep working it. I'm just doing a quick study if I wanted to do it and pull it off a little bit more to see what it would be looking like. Because part of my idea was having all of this stuff in the front be a little bit darker and richer, and then all some of the detail in the back then would sort of come together and be a little bit lighter. All right, there. So it's getting a little busy, but it's just a thumbnail, it's just fun or rough. Um, if I were to go do 
five more of those, I would probably be in a happier place and I would feel like it's starting to come together a little bit, you know? So there are some things in there that bother me already. Um, but, you know, that's the purpose of doing this is it the more of that's my stepping stone. And then if I do a couple more, I change it a little bit and I modify it a little bit more. So this one, I didn't construct a room. I was thinking of a cave and I was thinking of things at angles. I was thinking of lava being around there and maybe there's like pieces. That's the one thing I feel like that didn't come out too well that I was wanting to do. Let me draw on it and I'll explain it. I was wanting to have um, like, you know, like skipping stones and lava type of thing where it looks like you'd have to jump across. So it didn't come out as well because it. I this one, I think right here, is too large and too similar to that one there. So what I should have done is maybe made this come out a little bit more like this, had a small one here, pulled this back a little bit, and then have a different size one there, and then maybe another one here, and then maybe pulled this back a little bit more back there. You know, I don't know, just another pass. I might redraw it and take another look at doing something different. Okay, but that's, you know, um, the way that my brain sort of thinks about stuff is I'm either thinking about the room and the architecture and then fitting stuff in, or I'm thinking about some of the props and the groupings, you know, and you just sort of sketch it. And then when I'm sketching, I keep thinking about this, oops, this area here has to be the focal point. So I need things to support it. I need stuff to push me in there. Um, I need things at angles so if the eye circles around the composition it tries to come back down and if it ends up here that pushes you back in there and then having some of these just trying to get these repetitive shapes in perspective as they get larger as they go back you know like this so it keeps directing you that way so there are things in there i would fix um that i would modify a little bit more and change and and i did this really quick i i sort of don't like that idea it's okay for now, but there's some other things I might add to it. All right. So if you guys like, when we come back next class, I'll do another sketch for you. That sound cool? I'll think of something think else, so. and then I'll sketch it out again. Maybe I'll maybe I'll practice another one or two small thumbnails this weekend, so I get my brain more wrapped around the direction of what it is that I want to do. For okay? for your next one, could you? Uh design the room first before putting in the props without yeah. a ruler? Yeah, sure. Okay. I'll do that. That's a good idea, Naomi. Okay, excellent. Now my brain will be thinking about something to put together and how to arrange it, okay? Did that help you guys a little bit? Yeah. It, it's cool to see your process. And I mean, I think I don't ever, I wouldn't have ever envisioned myself starting with like object groupings and then working towards the structure. So seeing how you did that, why you did that, that was really helpful for me. Okay, cool. Uh, and I'll be honest, a lot of this, hold on, let me show you. A lot of what I just did there, it comes from this, guys. It comes from doing little thumbnails in my sketchbook. It's just mileage over and over and over and over. You know what I mean? Uh, sorry, the yellow doesn't read. It's, it's being in the sketchbook. It's, you know, you, I, I'm not afraid to fail in the sketchbook. I can do something and it, it might not work and that's fine. I can go back and do it and change it later. So for me, and I, and I sketch in a little ballpoint pen, these little cheap Bix or little paper mates. They're very cheap and they're, that's very loose and sketchy. And I like that. I like being able to get in there and have fun with it. So next time I'll do freehand, I'll do a room that's in more of uh, some type of perspective. Um, we'll do the room first and then I'll build the props around it. Okay? So you said you, you're gonna do some thumbnails beforehand before you start on it. Like, I would like to see you actually like doing, putting those thumbnails out. Uh, thumbnails? That's, yeah, cause, okay. cause sometimes I take way too long on my thumbnails. I wanna see how long it would take you. Cause this, this I wouldn't count this as a thumbnail. Cause okay. you took, quite a while right 
But um, yeah, I, I lose track of time once I start drawing. How long was it? 30 minutes? It was like, uh, like an hour. Was it an hour, really? Yeah. Yeah. I just, dang, I, I just dive into it and I just, my, my left side of my brain shuts off and I lose all track of time. I forgot to talk to you guys about stairs real quick. Do you want me to go over stairs real fast? Let's do that real, real quick. Okay. Just so some of you have um, the proper background in it. Let me, I'll save this drawing too. So I can go back and look at it and make sure. Hey. Yeah. Hey, Phil, those, those comps that were in your sketchbook, are those just little comps out of your head or did you look at reference for those or where did you get uh, the ideas from? So, sometimes I have a folder or two of reference I take with me, but most of them are just out of my head having fun just thinking of something like I I don't know why I get I, I think of like mechs or I think of a little boy with a robot traveling through like a jungle forest or I think a spaceship landing I just pick a theme that's fun you know yeah and then just sit and sketch it for a little bit um one second Bill yeah I have a question. Oh, by the way, thank you for showing the drawing then. Your brain must be tired. <laughs> uh, by the way, do you ever experience in the company when you're working, when you're drawing, but you're drawing with the distraction from other artists, let's say the producer sitting next to you or the director, and then you have to kind of drawing because I know storyboard artists, they always do like that, sitting and then they're giving you some direction. Uh, do you experience like that before? No, because I mean, if you're sitting in a room and you're problem solving around a conference table, that's fine. Mm -hmm. um, when I'm sitting and drawing, I'll show you which are probably the best headphones you can buy for a minimal amount of money. They are made by Sennheiser. They are called the Sennheiser HD 280 Pro. If I put these on, they're pretty ceiling, noise canceling. So I have like two or three pairs of these, they're corded. Now they're all wireless, but... Um, um, I use those quite a bit because I can just listen to music and draw and I block out any of the distractions. Remember, I have pretty bad ADHD. I can be sitting <laughs> in the room and I'll be like, you know, swirl or what are people talking about? And I, I get distracted very easily. So I don't want that to happen. Okay, let's really quickly cover some basics with stairs. Okay. Um, so what I just want to do this as a refresher because there might be some of you that might not have been taught this. Um, about how sort of stairs work, okay? Most of you will probably end up drawing a stair that will be in an angle sim similar to like this, okay? <laughs> Where you're gonna have, <coughs> excuse me, why is it not erasing? Erase to zero, there it goes, back to brush. Okay, so one of the things you have to do in your stairs is that you're going to have to establish the angle of the stairs. And this can be really important. So for this example, I'm, you, know, you always start with this angle right here in the back of your brain. That's how the stairs are gonna be created, okay? I'm gonna erase this. Now, the next thing you do is I come in here, it doesn't matter what the width of the stairs are, I'm just gonna draw them across like so, okay? Now, um, technically, what's going to happen, depending on the angle that I'm looking at is, if these stairs were to keep receding all the way back, they will eventually go to a vanishing point somewhere, okay? That's another discussion because the general rule of things receding away, that means the other side here is gonna be something similar to like that. It's gonna to have to be getting smaller as it goes back, okay? That's uh, one of the key things. Now, hold on a minute. My brain is a little tired. I did something wrong here that I shouldn't have done. Uh oh, whoa, 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 what did I just do? Hold on, Photoshop's being really buggy. Let me go back. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's just the recorder. Give me a minute, let me get back up there. Okay, what I meant to do is I'm, I'm a little t getting a little mentally, I, that's the, the vanishing point, okay? The stair, I put the stair to the back of the vanishing point because I'm not thinking. So your stair is gonna go like this. It's gonna to go towards the vanishing point. You're going to establish this angle, which would be the angle of the stairs in here, okay? All right, now, one of the key things to remember about a stairs in the vanishing point 
is, is that the stair heights are actually in relationship to each other. Okay, so um, we'll talk about that in a minute. Let's just make a rough stair right now. So if I have a stair coming off this, I go back to my vanishing point, my stair is going to come up in this direction. It's going to recede. Oops, sorry, I had a little bit of ruler slip there. It's going to recede back to that vanishing point. That would be the top of the stair. Then the stair is going to drop down and hit that line. Where it hits that line, the stair is then going to go again, and it's going to come forward, and then it's going to drop down. And as I continue to do this, the stair is going to go up. The secret to stairs, they're going to be getting larger as they come towards me. Okay. The secret to that stair is once it hits right here at the horizon line and goes past, okay, um, I can now see on top of the stair. That's the thing that students tend to screw up the most. Then this part of the stair is going to come out. It's going to drop down to about here. And then let's say this bottom part of the stair is going to come out to here and it's going to drop down to about here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to widen this length here a little bit, okay, to where it might end. And I'll line it up like that, okay? All right, so that's pretty much... If you were to draw a set of lines in there, these lines are actually receding back. Um, hold on, that line didn't go. Come on, Photoshop, give me my line, dang it. It's not working, hold on a minute, let's try again. Every time I try to make that line, it doesn't go, there it goes. Okay, so basically you have, there are lines in there and the stairs are sort of zigzagging up. They recede back to the vanishing point. They go up and they go over. The reason why this is important is students tend to screw this up because then when you draw the other side to where the stairs go, they don't have to be perfect. Students are forgetting what is happening in here. So let's say I end my stairs about here. Let's just say I'm gonna do it freehand, all right? And I have rough stone stairs like this. If my stair ends about here, okay, the next one's going to go forward. It might end about there. It might go forward. It might end about here. Once this next one goes forward and drops down, I'm going to be able to see on top of the stairs, meaning that when this stair comes down here, I'm going to be able to see this line that connects to there. Then now I'm going to be able to see the stair recede back to that vanishing point. I'm going to be able to see the top of the stair right in there. And then the stair is going to drop down again. And then this is going to go back across here. That's going to connect, come back to the vanishing point, draw your light line coming through here. That'll be the stair. This will come back here. It'll connect to there. That stair will drop down, and then it'll connect to right here. Where people tend to screw up their stairs is they forget about the placement of the horizon line, and they forget that once we go under that horizon line, we can see on top of this right here. Okay? That's it. That's all you got to remember. That's the golden thing about how students mess up stairs is they forget that little rule there. Now, once we go up above, you, you don't get to see on top of the stair anymore. It's just the line and you just see the angle sort of going up, okay? Now, I'm not gonna get in the hardcore perspective of this, but in perspective, we could follow these lines all the way back to a vanishing point. And then if we wanted to draw the stairs absolutely correct, this side and even this side, would also be going back to that same vanishing point. However, though, that's not important right now because that's how your stairs would look really boring and stiff and they wouldn't look right. We want our stairs to look like they're stone or they're free flowing and you can just draw them by hand as long as you just remember to do this. You remember to come in here and get this formation going down and out. What's important is these lines are all receding back to that vanishing point. And that's the part number one that students start to screw up as they forget that these recede back to the VP. The next, num so that's number one. The second thing students forget is once it drops underneath that horizon line, I can see on top of that surface and on top of that surface. That's it. That's all I wanted to show you about the stairs. Okay? That way, when you go in and sketch them, if you're above your horizon line, you're not going to be seeing on top of the stairs, are you? Nope. Okay. All right. Let me uh, go through the roll really quick. And then when we come back next class, um, I'll. do you want me to review work first or draw first? 
review. Okay, I'll review work first and then I'll take a look. Let's do another pass at thumbnails. Let's have fun. Let's be loose. And then after the review's done, I'll go back in. I'll do another sketch for you. Okay. I, by the way, I love getting to do this. I love getting to draw like this. It's a lot of fun because I miss being in that environment and getting to crank out work all day because you get really good that way. And it's just enjoyable, you know. Um, where's my brain right now? I'm clicking attendance like three times and nothing's happening. And now it's going, it's finally reloading. Okay. I had Kaylee here, I had Naomi, I had Mike, I had Kai, Greg, I had Andre, I had Robert, Lynette, John, um, and Farisa was here, Carolyn is here, Godfrey was here, Haley was here, Selena was here, uh, Aaron is here, Loki was here, and Zane was here, excellent. All right, you guys are free to go. Go have a good night, and uh, thank you guys, you're all doing a good job, keep up the good work, keep up the good fight, and I'll see you guys back on Monday, okay? Thanks, Phil. Yeah, Good night, Phil. everybody. Thanks, Phil. All right, take Thank care. You. Bye. Uh, yeah, I got, I got I got, no question. I just wanted to say, like, because I feel bad, because you actually caught me sleeping in class. It's just, uh, <laughs> it, it's just that, like, in high school, I slept in class so much, I developed this third eye, where, like, when I'm sleeping, I can still kind of hear and see what's going on. I know. So, That's like, okay. yeah, yeah. <laughs> All right. I was like, oh, Phil's, uh, Phil's just writing my name. Wait, what? <laughs> I looked up and I saw you and you're all, I'm all, he looks like he's dreaming, you know? No, yeah, I, 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 so. <laughs> I, you know what, I, this is what I said to, to Daniel today, because Daniel fell asleep in perspective, okay? So, um, and he was out, okay? And I knew he was out. And this is what I said. I said, you're doing the work and you do a great job. We're all human. If you get tired, you need to sleep a little bit. That's okay. I don't mind it. You know what I mean? As long as you're doing your work and you in, uh, You've been doing a great job. You've been doing all your work. You've been doing extra work. So it, it's no biggie to me at all, Zeng. Okay? okay, cool. Got yeah, so Selena was like sending me in like the direct messages. <laughs> you doing it. it. Probably like fall wake asleep up again. Yeah. Off the screen, right? Yeah. You told me just fall asleep again and don't oh, wake up this time. Else, <laughs> I know you were sleeping. You can't say that you weren't. Like, who <laughs> caught you? Because I, totally you know, I, I stopped for a minute and I hesitated in the demo and I looked at my cam and I'm like, He's not even moving. He's out. He's got like a light bulb, you know? So that's, yeah. that's okay. That was really funny. Nothing wrong with that. Okay. All right. All right. Take okay. care, guys. Cool. All right. Take care. Thanks, Phil. Right. See you later. Thanks, Phil. Bye, everybody. <laughs> Andre, I'll be texting you um, uh, probably on Friday. I get my shot. If I'm feeling really sick after that shot, um, I'll text you. And uh, what, what city are you living in now? Alerton, still, I still live close to the school. Oh, you still live really close to the school? Okay, good, yeah. mm -hmm. good. So that way, I might be able to, uh, I might be able to drive over, meet you, like in the parking lot of the school or something on Saturday morning. Sure, sure. But anyway, yeah, you already tired, sir. Just take a rest because my mom today take a vaccine, and then they need to be really in good health condition. So I think you need to be yeah. rested. So. I will. I'm getting. I'll get rested tomorrow when I finish class. I take a big nap. And yeah. then I'll get my shot Friday morning. I'm going to come home, answer email. What it does is it tends to hit you about five, six hours after the shot. Yeah. And then I'll probably just sleep and stuff. So no worries. Yeah. Um, and we'll get you some uh, some goodies, okay? Yeah, thank you so much, sir. I appreciate it.